Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of the Bobby Bones Show. We're so thrilled to have on award-winning country music singer, songwriter, and entertainer, Lacey J. Dalton. Lacey, thanks for coming on the show. Oh, Eric, I'm so happy to be you here. You know, I've been trying to get you on the show for years. You've had so many great hit songs, and I can't believe it because you cannot be this old. It's the 40th anniversary <laughs> of 16th <laughs> Avenue. I was listening to your songs on uh, your Spotify list, and it's like you have so many, I mean, millions of streams from these hit songs you've done. Well, it's been a long, it's been a long time. <laughs> I was so funny. I played recently with a, uh, an artist who was my age, and she said, I am so happy to be here tonight with you. He said, she said, actually, I'm happy to be anywhere. <laughs> and I thought, I was stealing that. That's oh, so my great. Gosh. Well, you know, so and, great. And, you know, and we were talking before we came in studio, too, to where, you know, really, as, as women entertainers and everything, you were one of the first ones to get out there and be on tour with Hank Williams Jr. and do all these incredible duets. Really, when and we were talking about you know Half Nelson, uh, the the album that you did with Willie Nelson, and it's like now it's more commonplace. But back in the day, you know, in the 70s and 80s, it was not. I think I, I because I was signed to CBS Artists as an outlaw artist. I got to do a lot of things that a lot of us girls didn't get to do. Right. Some of us did, but not many. Yeah. And and part of that was the, the, these long tours with Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard and Hank Williams Jr. forever. <laughs> and I even got to play David Allen Coe's wife in a movie, which it called "Take This Job and Show I it. knew that I was going to bring you? that up. That was your debut. It was. It was. It, and that went far. <laughs> <laughs> but he was. It was so funny because David Allen Coe is six foot seven. Right. And I'm like four foot, maybe <laughs> ten, like something. Uh, it was, how had amazing, a, though. I mean, but it, what was it like, you know, and, and now when you look back on it, you know, with so many great female artists in country music, but you were kind of, you know, covering new ground at that time and, and touring with the guys and doing movies and all this and duets. Many duets. Right. Many duets. Well, and Glenn Campbell duet. We I mean, did. it's like, I mean, George Oh, Jones. I love Glenn Campbell. You know, Glenn helped me. Because when I had um, 16th Avenue, which is the 40th anniversary of that song this right. month, um, I, was, I was a little uncomfortable because it, it didn't say anything about the women. And I said, you know, this song, I absolutely love this song, but I wish that it, it had something, it said something about women. And right. Glenn said, well, why don't you say, God bless all the girls at the end, just say it. And that's what Glenn gave me that gift. And it was, it's a wonderful gift. Right because we need to acknowledge women. Women have always been second class in this world. It needs to change. Right. We need to get, we need to become, and we are. It's becoming more and more equal all the time, but um, I think, uh, you know, there are some things lately that have, I think, set women back again, and, and I want to see those things, I want to see it be fair again, because oh. women have, women are strong. Mm. Definitely. You know, if you have women working for you, you will understand what I'm saying. Oh, my gosh. They well, will stay 14 hours longer than, you right. know, and your, and your guy will go home. And, right? and musically, I mean, you know, I, I think they always should have equal footing. And, and bringing up 16th Avenue, you know, what I like about it is when you listen to those lyrics, the lyrics are still poignant today. Here in Nashville, when you're over on Music Row and you're over on 16th Avenue and, and listening to your song and spending time with it the last few days, it's like it, it still matters, you know? I mean, what, what great lyrics that hold up 40 years later. I don't, Tom Scott, I wish I'd written it. <laughs> I didn't write that one. Uh, I wrote a lot of my first hits, but right. I didn't write that one. That was written by Tom Schuyler, who not only wrote that song, but then became an artist uh, with uh, Skylar Noblock and Overstreet at Scale, and they had a string of hits. Yeah. And then Tom decided he couldn't stand the road. <laughs> he would miss his family. He was so homesick. Oh he was eating gosh. all this candy and stuff, and he kind of blew up. Oh, <laughs> and no. he went, I can't do this. So he came back, and I think he became, I'm, I hope I'm not misquoting, but he uh, became the president of RCA Records. Wow. Then he became, now this is a guy who was a carpenter mm -hmm. in my friend Even Stevens' studio. Right. He was the one who took the song, he gave the song to Even, Even gave the 16th Avenue to Billy Sherrill for me, 
And that's how that happened. Amazing. But Tom ended up being the president of the International Songwriters Association and was in, is, an, is an inductee. Wow. Also into that. So he went from being a carpenter here. Right. Which is the story of that song, because so many of us come here, Eric, and we'll come here and maybe, and today it's even worse. Maybe mm -hmm. a kid will make two uh, collections of music, right. and if they aren't hits, they, they get stuck with a bus and a lot of bills mm -hmm. and people who've backed them, and they can't, they can't do anything about it. They no. just have to go back home to Ohio or wherever. Right. At, back in my day, they, did, they were better at developing artists. Mm -hmm. I'm still working on the foundation that was made for me by CBS Records in 1979. Wow. They did such a wonderful job. Now, I'm not heard of out here very much because I'm on the West Coast. Right. And I rarely come back. This is the first time I've been back in 11 years. Which we're so thrilled to have you in studio <laughs> for that. You, <laughs> and, and also, you know, you were bringing up about so many artists coming here just like you did. And to where, you know, you started out as a truck stop waitress and then you were also singing and would hop up and sing. <laughs> I mean, how does it feel to look back on that and still have this great career going, have new music that's gonna be coming out in the near future, 30 new songs, a new album, but also with the 40th anniversary of 16th Avenue, and you had another song earlier this year that you re-recorded acoustically with a 40th anniversary. How does that feel to look back on the truck stop waitress, Lacey J. Dalton, and today? That seems like a long time ago. That seems like, but, but 16th Avenue and Everybody M Makes Mistakes, which are the 40-year songs, mm -hmm. that doesn't seem so long ago. Right. Um, because I was doing that whole waitress thing in my, well, in my late 20s. I didn't get my record deal till I was 33 years old, and people were like horrified. Like, uh, this is how can this ancient person have a record deal? And, and I just, I just say, I wish they could see me now. Right. I just wish you could see me now. <laughs> you thought that was, you know, we we are not old at 33. For no. heaven's sakes, we're not even old at 70 anymore. Right. We're we're everybody I know is still. Look at Dolly is Dolly and I are the same age. We're still going, and we will be. And, and still great voices and creating new music through and, the grace of God. Right through the and grace. I bring up too it's like a uh, you know uh, with your many awards you know you've gotten into hall of fames and uh, and also the josie award how's it feel now to be gathering more of these awards at this time in your life it is it is humbling and it, i'm so very grateful this far down the road that josie award for independent music right that means I can't even tell you what that means to me because that's not with a big record company promoting you and pushing mm -hmm. you. In fact, I had a very funny thing happen. David Frizzell is my dear friend. And David and I had a picture taken. And my manager uh, made a t-shirt for me <laughs> called, that said, not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> and David and I had our p a picture taken with this T-shirt, uh, and we got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hits on it. Not because of David, right. not because of me, because people wanted the T-shirt. Oh my goodness! <laughs> you know, we're living longer. We're right. we're we're much more vital right. in our older years now, and um and I think that's great. And I think Americans are really doing a good job of mm -hmm. that. I really do think we're doing a good job. I agree. Good food. You know, people get into taking supplements. Better care of ourselves. Go to, you know, taking lots better care of ourselves, learning more about how to treat the body and keep it going, even those of us who have been hard chargers as young people. <laughs> well, I've got to no, bring uh, this up, too. Present companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, <laughs> besides, you know, the, the 40th anniversary with 16th Avenue, and you're working on new music, and I want to talk more about that, but in your spare time, too, you've worked with prisons and, and inmates sharing music and songwriting, and, and what an incredible thing to do to give back in that way and you told me you were kind of surprised at how much it helped the inmates with the music. I was, I was not really a believer. My, I had a bandmate by the name of Jack Bowers. And 20 years later, he'd been doing a, a program for inmates at Soledad Prison for many, many years. And he called me up and he said, I want you to come and I want you to work at the prison up in Susanville. It's a pretty notorious prison. Uh, High Desert State Prison in Susanville is a notorious prison. Yeah. And we were going to be working with the 20 to life guys. And I said, Jack, I, I really don't think I want to do that because I thought I would have to be like Nurse Ratchet. Right. And my good partner who's with me on this trip, uh, Dale Panetti, who you got to talk to right. quite my a bit today. Buddy. Your new buddy <laughs> and my old buddy. You know, I always ask him, I said, how, how long have we been together? And he'll do something like 13 <laughs> long. 
amazing years. Amazing years. But he, yeah, <laughs> he doesn't put the amazing okay. in. But uh, I, maybe he will from now yeah, on. Right. But anyway, he, uh, I said, well, I said, Jack, I want to go, and I do want to. I'll try this. He, yeah. because he, he insisted. He kept calling me and calling me. I said, okay, Jack, I'll go. And I said, but I want to take. I said, my guitar player is, is um, a musicologist. I said he uh, understands how to teach music. Uh, classically, right, and um, that's not something I'm going to be doing. I'll be teaching songwriting. And he'll be teaching them how to actually play the guitar and read music. Yeah. And so we went up there together. Dale is still up there after eight and a half years. Wow. I left after three and a half because I was uh, I was writing some stuff that I was really excited about, mm -hmm. and I wanted to get it recorded. And I did some of that, and I'm now writing a, a project that I'm really excited about, Eric. It's 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 called for the Black Sheep. My people, right? And um, it's um, it. I, I can't really explain to you what it is. It's uh, it's kind of a um, philosophical, and it's kind right. of spiritual, but it's not very religious. It's pretty kick butt. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that's what you're kind of known for. I mean, you know, as you brought up too, and it's so funny, you know, that you were considered outlaw. And it's like, you know, and, and, you know, that's kind of, you know, you think of Willie and Waylon and, you know, those kind of David Allen Coe, you know, but it's like. Hank you, Junior. Yeah, Hank ultimate. Junior, which yeah. you toured with for so long, you know, but you were considered an outlaw. So it doesn't surprise me that the new music is still in that vein. <laughs> it, it is. And yet it, um, I, I'm, I'm more excited about this stuff than I have been in music that I've been writing for a long time. So wow. I can't wait. I hope to get it out by January. Mm -hmm. And we'll see. <laughs> we'll, well see. Uh, you know, your voice, too, it's like I, I think a, a few of the things that you've always done so well, Lacey, is uh, your voice always sounds amazing and still does today. But your choice of lyrics, what I like is the, the imagery. You know, when I listen to your songs, I can visualize them. And I think that's why those songs that you've had that have been such hits on Billboard for you over the years, I'm sure every time you tour, they're always requesting these hits, just like 16th Avenue. Um, it, it, it just strikes a chord with you with the imagery and the lyrics that you've gone with. You know, lyrics are really, really important to me. I realized about halfway through my career that I wasn't paying enough attention to rhythm. As a musician, yeah. I was not paying nearly enough attention to rhythm. Dale's really good. Eddie Dale's really good at rhythms. But I was, I, if a song didn't say something that I wanted to say, or right. I couldn't believe in, or I didn't think it was going to help people or make them laugh or do something, lyrics are really important to mm -hmm. me. And I'm really picky, picky, picky about them. So I'm glad that, that you responded to that. I'm glad you noticed that. I'm glad when anybody does. Because I am trying to, I feel like a lot of us, um, who have been around for a while, we've, we've had challenges in right. life. And this is not an easy planet. This is not an easy existence. No. In this world, we will have trouble. Right. And so what we, I know Dolly feels the same way. Mm -hmm. You want to give people, you want to give people hope. You want to make people right. laugh. You right. want to make people feel good. You want to make people feel. Mm -hmm. Don't numb out. Right. And also you want to let people know that there are going to be hard times, mm -hmm. and and that you might have been through some yourself, right. and you want to give up. You want to say, "Take my hand. Mm -hmm. I've been there, done that. I know where you're hanging. You're going to be all right. It's well, going to be okay." That's why, with your music, I think too, Lacey, to where you know it's it's crossed so many vectors from the outlaws and then the, the Bay Area, you know, with Neil <laughs> Young and with all those people, and then obviously playing the Opry. You know, and, and on this past visit, you know, back on the Opry again, which oh, has to feel amazing. It's so fun. It's so fun to see everybody. I haven't really been back. I was so glad we just did a, a, a country cruise. Yeah. And I got to see all my cousins, you know, everybody, you know, T, uh, T. Graham Brown and oh, T.G. Shepard and David Frizzell and right. just all these, you know, Mo Bandy and a lot of people that, you know, uh, I don't get to see very often, the Gatlin boys. And, right. And so uh, we got to hang out with uh, everybody the Bellamy's who I adore. Oh, Howard and, and David, just amazing. I, I didn't hear how they did uh, in that hurricane we had a long time ago. I, I never I think even they're okay because, you know, they keep touring I haven't Europe heard. everywhere. Yeah. I, I haven't yeah. heard, and I'm going, yeah. I hope you guys are all right. <laughs> My sister lives down there, though, and uh -huh. I have some good friends in that, that hurricane that happened. Right. Uh, really was terrible, but oh. it didn't hit a lot of areas. It no. was where, where it hit, it was terrible, but where it didn't. Well, you're, you're going to have to come back to Nashville more often now. I definitely will. 
Especially when this new album comes out. I definitely will. Well, if if y'all like it back here, I will be back. You know, you're always play. welcome here. Well, and I want to make sure for our viewers too, Lacey, that they know for your website, social media, everything that you do, you know, and especially with uh, you know pictures of you and David Frizzell with great T-shirts. <laughs> where do our viewers? We're going to make a get? fortune with well, that T-shirt. Exactly. exactly. That's a that's a whole new thing. That'll, that'll support the tours. I might be. And the next album. We'll probably make more money from that than we do from anything. <laughs> well, where do our viewers Not need to go? Did yet. Uh, the best place to go is LaceyJDalton.org, and there's no E in Lacey. Yep. It's just L-A-C-Y. Well, it's like, you know, uh, what, a, what a classy lady and, and great music, and congratulations on the 40th anniversary of 16th Avenue, which I can't believe, and we can't wait to hear the brand new music coming out uh, this next year and see you back on tour. Back on tour. Lacey J. <laughs> Dalton, thank you so much for joining us. Bless you, my son. This was fun, Eric. Thank right. you. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bones show.